This is the APC Toys Optimus Prime. We're gonna go over the figure's robot mode, the vehicle mode, and an interesting hidden detail the figure has. So stick around, please. This is essentially a knockoff made by a third party company of the Transformers Prime Optimus Prime figure. I was referring to one already among us. So it's unlicensed and a copy of a pre-existing figure, meaning it's technically a bootleg, meaning I can put bootleg in the title of this video for extra views. I did buy this with my own money from the Chosey store. For the packaging, you get some really cool artwork of Optimus Prime and a bit more of him right there. I like the design at the back. Now let's open him up. Here's the figure and I love the way this guy looks. Now APC Toys has made different versions of this figure. There's another color scheme and I kind of wish I was able to get that one because I do prefer the colors on that more than this. But this one is still pretty good. This one definitely has a more darker and muted color scheme just like the Takara release of their Transformers Prime Optimus Prime. This figure has everything. Looks, sexy abs, accessories, and a really nice wallet. Just kidding. But this portion of the video is sponsored by Exter. Exter is a wallet company that uh, well, makes wallets if you couldn't tell. Wallets are important for keeping pictures of my waifus and now I can do that with my extra wallet. Isn't that amazing? The wallets come in a really nice packaging. This one is the parliament. It's very sleek and I like the way it looks. The cards go in at the top but wait Mecha Z you ask. How do I get the cards out of the wallet? They won't come out. Well the answer is simple. Just press this button and they shoot out. That's very fun to do actually. This one is the aluminum card holder. It's nice and solid. I actually plan on using this one for my photography business cards. I go to a lot of conventions and this will make it easy to carry them and hand out. Both wallets have RFID blocking so people can't steal your card info and can hold up to 12 cards including cash. I also have their wallet tracker. This is rechargeable with the power of the sun. I actually plan to put this in my camera backpack because there's over $2,000 worth of stuff in here. Their sale ends November 3rd and you can get a 25% discount if you use my code or click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Now I do believe there is some sort of metallic paint job going on because you can see some sort of metal flakes. It's even more apparent on the legs. The figure itself starting with the head sculpt you get a nice darker blue head. It is pretty well done. I mean, it is copied from the original figure. Fourth party company, it's essentially copy and paste authentic figures, but I still think it's done very well. I do like the mouth guard on the figure. There is a regular face version of the head the figure comes with, and I'll show that later. The forehead piece, the vents on the side, and the eyes are done really well. There's some more nice detail at the back, as well as some light piping, so instead of the figure looking dead, he can look somewhat alive. Like this, like this. Further down the head into this area, you get a lot of detail going on. It looks really nice. I do like the translucent blue on the chest piece, and how you can see the really nice designs going on the inside. Side. It was like this in the original release as well. Further down, you go to the skinny abdomen area, and there is a lot of nice sculpt work and detail going on here. You get a bit of yellow paint on there, and I will say I'm not the biggest fan of the brownish color that appears on certain parts of this figure. You can see it on the arms at the top over here, as well as on the hands and legs. It is nitpicky, and it is kind of just my personal preference, so I don't really count that against the figure. Oh my god, are you playing with yourself? His arms are looking nice and bold, sculpted really well. And here's a quick look at the inside. The hands are also done pretty well. If you lift his shoulder pieces up, you do get a little bit of detail inside. It might be a little bit hard to see. Further down, you get his slim legs, wheels on this side, a little bit of silver paint over here, and some nice detail on the inside. And just like the original, the back of the legs do look kind of weird. I do feel like this kind of sticks out, but it's not that big of a deal. Turn the figure over to the back, you get his iconic smokestacks. I do like how this section all folds up. Now these back parts over here are kind of awkward. Awkward. On my copy of the figure, they don't want to stay in all the way. As much as I want to tab them in, sometimes they kind of just pop out. Since it is attached to these, I think it has something to do with trying to get these to be positioned just exactly right so it stays in. But honestly, it's not something I'm going to bother with trying to get these to fit exactly right because I don't care that much. So we're just going to move on. A better look at the back if you can see that over there and the back of the rest of the legs, not too much. Now, if we open this back section up, there is some hidden detail inside the figure. I think it's impressive that Hasbro and Takara originally did this. Like, look at all the things they put on the console. No one's gonna see this until you open up the back of the figure. I do feel like I kind of just sped through that section. There isn't a whole lot of detail on the figure. The main parts really being this part of the legs, the abdomen, the chest, and this top part over here. Since it is from the animated series, it's not gonna have a whole lot of detail, which is fine. I really do like this figure and I think it looks amazing. Now I do have the APC Toys Dark Master Megatron. I do believe this is a scaled up version of the original figure and I have done a review on this so make sure to check that out after this video. I want to die. Whoa and you're getting this for free too. Here's the size comparison of the two and here we have some size comparisons with some other Optimus Prime figures. And here he is next to Predaking, the only original Transformers Prime figure that I own. Now, in terms of the figure's articulation, you get a up and down head movement, a full 360 rotation, a 360 arm rotation. Move this out of the way and the arms can move out there. This can untab, so you could use that to your advantage if you wanted to. I will say it does untab a lot when trying to pose the figure. Bicep rotation, a 90 degree elbow bend. The hand rotation on this figure is pretty tight. Doesn't seem I can get it to go a full 360. Waist rotation, but it does move from back 
back there. The legs can move up there. You can bring them out to the side and you can bring them back. Leg rotation. There is a knee bend that goes to 90 degrees. Pretty good foot pivots that goes both ways. You can move it back, not really forward. Foot movement down. So the articulation on this figure is pretty standard. Now the legs aren't super loose, but they do tend to spread apart when trying to pose. So that is kind of annoying. Overall, the sculpt work proportions and colors on this figure are fantastic. And it's really nice that APC Toys is taking some of these older figures and giving people another chance to get them. And I do believe they make slight improvements and modifications on the figures as well. Accessories wise, oh, come here. This is the other head sculpt he comes with. This does also have light piping at the back and the face sculpt is pretty good, but it does kind of look like he's disappointed in me. Once again though, I do prefer the closed off mouthpiece version, so I will be using that. You get two Energon blades that are done really well. I love the translucent blue on them. His two blasters and the sculpt and detail on here is done fantastic. I do like the little, I guess, sparkles or whatever they have going on. It gives it a very space themed. However, I do like APC's toys other version where the tips were kind of singed. You can also bring the blaster and the Energon sword together like that. For uh, that look, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember if this was a thing in the show. And lastly, you do get the Star Saber and this looks really amazing. I love the silver paint on here and this gold piece. This is just absolutely fantastic. One shall stand, one shall fall. Why throw a- fighting you silly geese to put this on the figure we're going to take off this bottom piece put it in his hand and put this back on and it's hard to see but this bottom part does need to line up with the screw and because of this hand guard it is kind of awkward to get it in all the way you can have it there but now you can't really turn it because the fingers are in the way you could try to tilt it in like this and then bring it down now this piece is kind of hard to see it does go in that hole over there we can insert that in there if i can see i, I cannot see it at all there we go and i've misplaced the star sabers right here and we can place the star saber on the back now now. Don't know why I'm struggling so much with this and this has come off now. Okay, there we go. And it shouldn't fall off. The connection is sturdy if you push it in all the way. For the Energon blades, we just put them in his hands. Same with the other one. And now he's there upside down. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen and do them the right way. And here he is with both Energon blades. And lastly, his ion blasters. We can just put them on his hands. And there he is with those. So you do get a pretty decent number of accessories for this figure. On top of that, they are all five millimeter compatible. So you can give them to other figures. This one was probably not the best one because it's kind of bulky on the hands, but there is an idea of what you can do. The transformation is fairly simple. What I like to do first is come down to the feet and close these up. Same with this one. Then I like to untab the arms from the wheels, come down to this section of the arms, undo this and bring it out. Bring the hand down. Now take this section and bring it in just like so and tab it into place. Come to the other side and do the exact same thing. Bring the hand down and rotate this to where we can tab it into place. Fold in the arms like so and bring these in. Rotate the waist 180 degrees. Now bring this section down and try to bring the arms up like so. And now we can tab this front piece in. Now rotate this section and align this to where it tabs in. Same with this one. Make sure everything is snug. Now we can come to the back, unfold this out of the way. Take this front section of the truck, unfold it and bring it down. Tab it in place. Come do the same thing with the other side. Unfold that and bring it all the way down. Get it in place. Now we can connect the front section in. Come over to the back so we can bring in the head. Now we can come back down to the feet. We're going to bring out these legs. Make sure this trailer hitch comes out. And now we can tab the legs together. Connect these two pieces and then bring them in over to the top like so. Now these side pieces, just bring them into place like so. Same over here on this side. And the smoke sacks do have a tab, so make sure that's in there. Same with this one. Now we can adjust this back part, fix this. Here is the vehicle mode for the figure, and it looks absolutely amazing. There is weapon storage in the vehicle mode, but since we do get two of these, what we can do is bring them back together and place it on like so. And honestly, that does look kind of cool. The colors on it are still pretty good in the vehicle mode. Their other version did have some metallic silver on it. I wish this one had it as well. This doesn't want to seem to tap into place though. But the rest of it is pretty good. If we take a look at the tires, they do have some nice detail on them. You have some rivets throughout the truck mode over here, and you can see a little bit more of it over here and here. I do like some of the nice detail on this part. This is something you would see on an actual truck. Not the biggest fan of this color over here, but once again, all these colors are pretty much the same as the Takara release. You do get some tiny bits of yellow paint and some blue windows. Some more nice truck details on this side with all the panels and the shape of the door handle. These smokestacks are very long. I didn't realize that in the robot mode. I do like the blue tint for the headlights and you can see some headlight details inside. Underneath of the figure, everything seems pretty compact. Coming to the back, this part doesn't look too great. You have some hollow bits and it does kind of feel like something is missing. Further back here, you do have a trailer hitch and here is a trailer. Let's see if it fits on. And as you can see, it does kind of work like that. Now, APC Toys did make a trailer if that is something you want to spend the extra money on. And the size of the vehicle mode is pretty decent. Uh, I'm not going to do a size comparison with other vehicles because I am lazy. I don't want to transform multiple figures. Overall, this is a great figure and I think it's definitely worth a buy.